Keston is an Israel commentator. He's in Tel Aviv. Uh, Matt, uh, the, a lot of the UK media is not talking about this, but I'm sure everybody in Israel is talking about this. What do we know? Just tell us the facts, Matt. Hi, Peter. Um, well, we have, we have the United Nations that have a separate organization in UNRWA, the only organization separate in the world um, that looks after refugees, um, the Palestinian refugees. There is no other country where there's a separate organization. Why is Every it separate? Other Why is it separate, Mark? Well, it's a great question. Why is it separate? It's political. If you go to another country and seek refuge, if you are anything other than Palestinian, your children and your grandchildren will no longer be refugees. They will be members of that country. Okay? They will be citizens of that country. If you are a descendant of someone that left um, the area in 1948 or have left, yes, left that area in that, in that era and you're Palestinian, your children and your children's children and your children's children's ch children, as long as UNRWA exists, will continue to be counted as refugees. Tell us about what has actually happened over the last little while in the discovery of uh, electrical cables, of servers, of big batteries that can power things for a long time. Um, if there was a tunnel being uh, constructed under this building, for example, you might feel something. You might know what was going on. And, of course, in the 7th of October attacks, there have been people sacked from this organisation because they have allegedly been involved in that attack. There are WhatsApp groups that have been put in the public domain of people saying, isn't it wonderful that uh, the, the attacks, the terrorist attacks on Israeli people happened? This is a massive scandal and a lot of isn't the world is looking another way, Matt. It's no secret that UMRO is embedded within Hamas. It's been known for a long time. This isn't a surprise to anyone here in Tel Aviv, here in the whole of Israel. Um, UNRWA and Hamas are working together. This is, this is not a big, you say it's a scandal, but none of us here were shocked by this discovery of a, a tunnel underneath where there's an UNRWA building. It's just, it happens all the time. It's just, we've gone in there now but we, we and we're uncovering this. Stuff. Sitting here in the UK, Matt, we're, we, we paused the funding, but for a long time we've been funding it, as have lots of other Western governments have been funding this UN, UN agency. And I saw a commentator from the left, it was on Owen Jones's timeline. I don't know if it was him himself. I can't actually remember, but it was someone saying, if you believe the people who are saving lives, if you don't believe the people who are saving lives, and you do believe the people who have, you know, murdered, uh, as, as this person put it, uh, killed is probably more accurate, uh, in terms of the Israeli military, you're on the wrong side. I mean, the left will weaponize this, and I've already commented on this and said we need to actually not see this as a big deal. But it is a massive deal. It's a huge deal. And the fact that money from taxpayers' pockets in the UK has paid for this organisation is something I am incredibly angry about. Yeah, well, you should be. British taxpayers should be horrified that this is happening and that money that you put into your government is going over to Gaza. Um, not only that, I mean, look, Hamas, Hamas itself is the second best funded charity, terrorist organisation in the world, only to is only second to Islamic State. Um, yeah. They they are extremely rich. They have all the money. They put all their money into attacking Israel and building weapons and building facilities to attack and destroy Israel. Mark's, you were talking about... Yeah, sorry, go ahead. You were talking about genocide before. I mean, I find it comical. I find it very comical that anyone is discussing genocide. If we put down our, all our weapons, then tomorrow, and we had no defence, tomorrow Hamas would commit, commit a genocide against the Israeli people. They would destroy us. They would remove us completely from the world if they could. We, on the other hand, have no interest in committing any such thing in the Palestinian territories. All we want to do is remove Hamas. In Rafa, though, I mean, it is the case, Matt, that a lot, and, well, it is the case that tens of thousands of innocent people have died as a result of Israel's actions. There is a humanitarian crisis in Gaza, in Rafa, where people have been told to be. Netanyahu is saying, you know, uh, we've got to evacuate, but the, uh, the situation and the uh, tents and the places that people need to go are not yet built. I'm not asking you to defend the actions of Benjamin Netanyahu per se, but there is a real worry about the humanitarian aspect of what might happen in the next few days. I'm also worried about that. And um, Netanyahu gave a deadline of the start of Ramadan, which is March the 10th. So we've got exactly one month. But this is important, OK? And this is important because we have destroyed almost every battalion of Hamas. 
and 70% of the way there through uh, Khan Yunis. And Rafa is the final place where they have four left, four strong battalion holds. Um, and of course, they are embedded within the biggest civilian population of uh, people seeking refuge right now who aren't able to be in any other place in Gaza because it's unsafe. And I do hope, I do hope that the Israeli government and Benjamin Netanyahu and the IDF and the army, they set up provisions and set up 10 areas and help to make sure that the 1 million plus people that are currently in Rafa seeking refuge because they can't be anywhere else are able to move the three hour, two to three hour walk to Amarasi on the, on the coast and seek shelter there in a safer area. They have to do that before we go in and finish off Hamas. Just stay where you are for a second, Matt, because I want to bring in Ralph Schulhammer, who's Professor of Economics at Webster University in uh, Vienna. Ralph, you're very welcome to the programme again. What do you make of this? Uh, great to be with you, Peter. Great to be with you, Matt. Uh, no, I think I agree with everything that Matt has said, and I think there's a lot of that's going on. We have to set uh, the facts straight. And uh, you mentioned it a little bit when you talked about genocide, but also in more general terms, there are all these kind of myths out there, for example, that Gaza is the world's most densely populated area in the world. I mean, I'm here in Vienna. 15 out of the 23 districts in Vienna have a significantly higher population density than Gaza. The same is about this idea of, you know, we no longer talk about genocide. There's now this new creation the term of genocidal intent so that somehow you can accuse Israel of something. It's the same thing. If you look at the population development in Gaza, right, it shows you over the last couple of years, every year for decades now, the population has been growing by two to three percent. So there's, there's a lot of myth making out there with a political agenda. Now, the other thing that I think Matt has alluded to that is true, if Hamas survives this conflict, they're going to come out and they will use it as propaganda to say, see, we defeated Israel again. They did this in the past, right? Mm. You will have the pictures of the Hamas fighters coming out of their tunnels with the victory sign. And I do understand that this is something that Israel cannot accept. It's it's tough. There is going to be, you're right, there is a humanitarian dimension to this. But even there we have, and I don't want to be cynical, but this is unfortunately how the facts on the ground yeah. have developed. The average age in the Gaza Strip, like most people there in the late teens and early 20s, compared to Austria and Great Britain, where everybody is in, on average is in their mid-40s. So this is why, which is horrible, but this is, of course, why the numbers of young victims in this conflict is so high, because the entire population is so high. Now, I this just, is not just, an excuse, but it's important to keep it in perspective. Just hold that thought for a second. I want to come back to both of you on this. Now, there's a dude called... Philippe Lazzarini, and he is the Commissioner General of this organization of the Refugee Agency, the UN Refugee Agency in Gaza. Um, some of his claims here, uh, well, listen, let me just read them out. You can make up your own mind. Don't, don't be influenced by what I say. UNRWA did not know what is under its headquarters in Gaza. UNRWA is made aware of reports through the media regarding the tunnel under the head, our headquarters in Gaza. Our staff left its headquarters in Gaza City on the 12th of October following the Israeli evacuation order and as bombardment intensified in the area. We have not used that compound since. We left it, nor are we aware of any activity that may have taken place. We understand the Israeli army has deployed troops within the headquarters in Gaza City. We are therefore unable to confirm or otherwise comment on these reports. In times of no active conflict, UNRWA inspects its premises every quarter. The last inspection for UNRWA Gaza premises was completed in September 2023. We're a humanitarian development organisation that does not have military or security expertise, nor the capacity to undertake military inspections of or what might be under its premises. In the past, whenever a suspicious ca cavity was found close to or under our premises, protest letters were promptly filed to parties to the conflict, including both the de facto authorities in Gaza, Hamas, and the Israeli authorities. The matter was consistently reported in annual reports presented to the General Assembly and made public. These recent media reports merit an independent inquiry that's currently not possible to undertake given Gaza is an active war zone. The Israeli authorities have not informed UNRWA officially about the alleged tunnel. Ralph, what do you make of that? Well, even if hypothetically we believe every word, right, the main problem remains. It's a game of whack-a-mole, which is um, as long as, for example, an institution like UNRWA is financed by the West, and then that financing relieves Hamas from taking any care of its population, they can use their money for military, you know, for military equipment, for rockets that then they use for the destruction or the attempted destruction of Israel. By the way, just to add on to something that Matt said about the Islamic State, we see the same with the Taliban in Afghanistan, right? We finance the Taliban as well. We say, oh, no, it only goes to human 
humanitarian things. Yes, but you free then up funds for other things because money is fungible. So there is a lot of you know willful blindness and of course in some cases open lying going on. And the UNRWA is one of the largest employers in the Middle East, so it's well known. I mean, they are not just Hamas is not just embedded within UNRWA. UNRWA is also embedded within Hamas. So it's completely delusional to say, oh, this is a completely separate institution. And we saw after October 7th that you had members of this organization cheering what happened. Although I would add, you had also members of institutions, particularly universities and academic institutions in the West, who were cheering it too. So, I mean, the ugly face of anti-Semitism kind of all over the world that reared its ugly face over the last couple of months has been astounding. Um, Matt, what do you think of what Philippe Lazzarini has said? And also our texter, Dave, who's texting me to say, is the money going to UNRWA funding Hamas? Are UNRWA complicit in anti-Semitism and the ideology of the destruction of Israel? I mean, the answer is yes, isn't it? The saddest thing about UNRWA, Peter, is that when Israel conducted um, investigations into schools and what kids are being taught in the Gaza Strip, um, they are taught to hate. In their history books, in schools, they are taught to hate us from the youngest of age. So they're brainwashed as they grow up to think we are the worst people that must be destroyed in the world. That is what kids are taught. Um, I, <laughs> We're talking about a place which is run, the Gaza Strip, that is run by a terrorist organization. This is not England in a democracy where you have a nice office or a aid agency. It's not the situation. You have an aid agency on the ground that are in a place controlled by terrorists. Even if, even if, Peter, UNRWA had the best intentions in the world, the reality on the ground is that place is controlled by Hamas. What do you think is going to happen? They, they can control and influence everything that happens with that money. By force, if they have to, by threatening. You saw what they did on October the 7th. These are not a friendly bunch of people. We are dealing with terrorists.